Hello, my name is Lukas Brodel and I'm a software architect for hardware-dependent Ethernet networking products at Electrobit. Today I would like to talk about network virtualization in automotive environments. To understand why virtualization gains more and more importance, let's have a look at the evolution of vehicle network architectures. Nowadays, most cars are organized in separate, rather independent heterogeneous networks, only connected through a common backbone. Many times these domains have their own solutions to similar problems, and it's not uncommon that their wires take similar paths through the vehicle. The first step to reduce these redundancies in both data exchange as well as the wiring is the centralized architecture. It aims to focus domain independent functions at central servers where they are easy available to all electronic control units. The second step takes the hardware software separation even further. Sensor and actuator ECUs get simpler and more generic because the computational efforts are almost completely taken over by central compute platforms. They are also no longer bound to a specific domain, but connected to Sonal controllers based on their location in the car. A cornerstone of these developments are the high-performance controllers, or short HPCs. They provide powerful, automotive-grade multi-core CPUs combined with high-speed communication interfaces. But what's the most efficient way to leverage their strength? To ensure the overall complexity doesn't explode, such systems need to be broken down into manageable components, and this is where the virtualization comes into play. The hypervisor on high-performance controllers can be used to run virtual machines on different cores that behave like single, standalone ECUs. As such, their development can be handled by multiple teams or even independent companies. Consequently, each VM needs to be able to communicate with all other VMs as well as external ECUs in a very similar way like single ECUs are connected to an Ethernet switch. So what are the requirements for such communication? In short, the VMs need to be able to communicate with the network as well as with each other. They need to be able to gain common perception of time and their interfaces need to be free from various interferences to ensure safety and security. For a more detailed explanation of these requirements, I'd like to recommend Helmut Gebb's webinar about that topic. You'll find the link on the last slide of this presentation. Some HPCs provide single Ethernet hardware interfaces. If you're interested in such devices, I'd like to refer to Michael Zinsack's presentation about Automotive Ethernet for Virtual Machines. Again, you'll find the link at the end of the presentation. Other HPCs provide PCIe connected switches or even have dedicated switches integrated. Further on, we are going to focus on this type of hardware. Here we see a HPC with a PCIe connected switch that runs multiple virtual machines. To allow them to communicate independently, all traffic can be handled and sorted by an additional infrastructure virtual machine. However, not only does this introduce additional hardware and software efforts, but such an infrastructure VM is also potentially vulnerable. If attackers could take over this VM, they would be able to control the complete communication of the HPC. So is this really the only way to do it? Luckily, there's a technology that can help. Single Root I.O. Virtualization, or short SRIOV. It was originally developed for the virtualization in the IT world and offers several so-called virtual functions that allow the VMs and the Ethernet switch to exchange frames directly. Simply put, the VMs are directly plugged into virtual ports of the Ethernet switch, which are treated in a very similar way like external Ethernet ports. However, in reality, it's not quite so simple. SRIOV requires dedicated hardware support by the Ethernet switch. Many details like the address translation for direct DMA transfers need to be resolved, and that's where the EB Corbus virtual Ethernet switch comes in. As a module of the hypervisor, it takes care of the physical function, which is responsible for the configuration and control of the network hardware. There, it also enforces VLAN memberships and prevents VM from consuming all available bandwidth or gaining access to the memory of other VMs. To compare these two approaches, we took a Realtek switch and connected it to a RENSS 8 PC with the PCIe interface. Inside the HPC, we ran three different Linux distant instances that are prepared to receive and mirror streams with a 4K resolution. With a demo PC application, we can initiate the transmission of three parallel streams 
and the resulting traffic allows us to analyze how the EB Corbus virtual Ethernet switch and SRIOV compare to the software-based solution using the dedicated infrastructure virtual machine. In the first scenario, we tested the software-based solution. What we can see is that we are streaming three different videos. The fact that the frames are all processed by the infrastructure VM is reflected in the CPU load. Note that also the hypervisor is involved in this communication. In the second scenario, we ran the EB virtual Ethernet switch with SRIOV hardware support. Again, we are streaming the same three videos. And what you can see is that the load on the EB Corvus virtual Ethernet switch, as well as the hypervisor, is much lower. In fact, the hypervisor is almost completely idle. To sum it up, the usage of the EB Corvus virtual Ethernet switch with SIOV shows a significantly reduced CPU consumption with savings of approximately 85% in our measurements. On top of that, the EB Corvus virtual Ethernet switch enables dependable, safe, and secure communication. Together with our other products like the EB Corbus Hypervisor or the EB Trezos Ethernet Switch firmware, it helps you to get the best out of your Ethernet networking hardware. Today we have shown what we can do with hardware from Realtek and Renesas, but of course EB products are also available for other vendors supporting the necessary hardware features. Please feel free to contact us if you're interested and thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.